Commissioner Fowler. Present. Commissioner Scrivener. Commissioner Sanders. Here. Commissioner Bauer. Here. Commi Commissioner McGibbon. Here. Commissioner Morris. Here. Commissioner McGuire. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Rivera. Now we're going to do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Liz is going to, uh, Commissioner uh, Morris is going to lead the uh, pledge. Okay. Ready? Salute. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're on to number three, approval of the minutes um, of the Mr. September Mr. Chairman, 25th meeting. We need to have a roll call first. Well, we did the roll call. Oh, we did? We? I was busy doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I missed it. <laughs> um, approval of the minutes of the September 25th, 2019 meeting. Yeah, we actually have a correction on item number five in the text. It says, uh, the actual proceeding number is 1751, and in a text it says 1771, so it needs to be corrected to say 1751. I'll move approval with that correction. Second, Fowler. Uh, motion by Commissioner um, Couch and seconded by Commissioner Fowler. Uh, cast your votes, please. Motion approved, all ayes. Uh, we're on to number four, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Number five, um, uh, Mr. Knox, you, uh, this has to do with uh, um, uh, both uh, 1751 and 1752. Um, uh, Mr. Knox, uh, sure. You, on 1751, this is current sanitation authority annexation number one and dissolution of, of county service area number 11.4. This is a reorganization. This also requires a sphere of influence amendment, which is proceeding number 1752. Uh, with the chair's commission, I'll make one uh, presentation and then we'll go to two votes on this, one on the sphere amendment and one on the, um, the annexation and dissolution. This item was continued from last meeting uh, because we did not have a quorum. Uh, for your consideration today is a proposed annexation of approximately 186.2 acres consisting of 392 developed residential and commercial lots in the Kern Sanitation Authority and to dissolve uh, uh, County Service Area or CSA 11.4 from the same area. The proposed sphere of influence amendment covers the same boundaries. The location is east of South Union Avenue, south of Pacheco, in an unincorporated area known as Rexland Acres. Rexland Acres currently receives sewer service from, the, from Kern, the County of Kern under a dependent special district called County Service Area CSA 11.4. The CSA is run by the Board of Supervisors with a separate budget from other county service areas. The sewer fees received from property owners do not go into the county's general fund, but are only used for sewer service in this specified area. The county also runs another dependent special district called Kern Sanitation Authority. Kern San Sanitation Authority operates the sewer treatment plant and owns many of the sewer lines running through the unincorporated Metro Bakersfield area. CSA 11.4 contracts with Kern Sanitation Authority to maintain the sewer system in the Rexland Acres, as well as the processing of waste headed to the sewer plant itself. 
So what you have are two spe dependent special districts contracted with each other, but run by the same board of supervisors and managed by the same county staff. The county has come to understand that this is inefficient and can be handled by one dependent special district, not two. To accomplish this, the county has requested that CSA 11.4 be dissolved and, and current sanitation authority amend their sphere of influence and annex uh, Rexland Acres. The only difference the general public will see is on their property tax bill. It will say KSA in, instead of CSA 11.4. There will be no change in service or cost to property owners. It is expected that any savings from the elimination of CSA 11.4 will be used to make improvements to the sewer system. So there will be no tax increase. The zoning on this is residential and commercial. This is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plans or specific plans. It is definitely consistent with commission policies. There is no ag land conversion. It conforms to assessor parcels. Uh, there will be no functional overlap. Uh, does not change the amount of water to be used. Uh, the county has sent us an indemnification agreement. CEQA is handled by a notice of exemption. Uh, comments and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided, although we did hear from several in the community who were interested in what this, what this was. Uh, they didn't understand it at first, but once I explained that we were getting rid of a, a layer of government, everyone seemed to think this is a good idea. Um, the annexation to the district does not have 100% landowner consent. Uh, the county is aware that notice hearing and protest hearing will not be waived. So that, with that, we have, we'll need two votes based on my recommendation. My first recommendation is that commissioners consider the environmental doc document adopted by the applicant and approve annexation to current sanitation authority and dissolution of CSA 11.4, contingent on the results of the protest hearing. This is time for public comment on uh, this issue, these issues. Not commissioners, do you have any comments or questions? Okay, I call for a pardon. You need a motion on the staff's recommendation? Um, yes. So, uh, so moved. Second. This would be for 1751, right? Correct. We'll come, I'll give a recommendation for 1752 and we're done with this. Okay, I have a first and a uh, I have a motion by Mr. Couch, uh, Commissioner Couch, and uh, uh, Commissioner Sanders. Uh, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Uh, we now um, will vote on uh, 1752. I need a motion. Well, Ed, I got, let, me, let me give my recommendation. Oh, okay, um, go ahead. Uh, recommendation, recommendation is to consider the environmental impact report adopted by the applicant covering both the annexation and sphere of amendment. My recommendation is to approve the sphere amendment conditional on approval of annexation 1752, which you just did. So um, that's my recommendation. Okay. Um, might need a motion uh, in a second. Motion. Motion. Second. Okay, motion by um, uh, 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 Commissioner Bauer and seconded by Commissioner Couch. Uh, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. We're now on to um, C and D, uh, and again, these are two joint ones, uh, correct, uh, Mr. Knox? That is correct. We have uh, 1758 51. and 1759. That is correct. Okay. Switch pages here. 1758 is county service area number 34. This is annexation number one. There's also a sphere of influence amendment, which is proceeding number 1759 for county service area number 34. Uh, the proposal is to annex and amend the sphere of influence of approximately 31.31 acres of land generally located along the east side of Pence Street 
west of Oswell Street, north of Pioneer, and south of Center Street. The surrounding properties are residential, commercial, and industrial. The CSA will create zones of benefit, number one, for drainage facilities and maintenance, number two, for street sweeping, and number three, for landscaping and wall maintenance to existing improvements. This is a, de a development in unincorporated Kern County that was originally approved in the mid-2000s. In mid, in mid it included a condition that this area would be annexed into the CSA 34. For a variety of reasons, this area did not develop right away, and the CSA was not extended to cover this area. This area has been recently developed, and the county realizes that the condition of approval was not met and needs to be brought before this commission. This property is still owned by one person, and the homes are rented out to seniors, so it's a senior uh, area. This explains why there's 100% landowner consent, but not 100% uh, voter consent. Therefore, a protest hearing cannot be waived and needs to be conducted. Uh, there is no tax increase with this. There will be fees uh, associated. Uh, residential and commercial zoning are in, in the immediate area. Uh, it's consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plan. It's consistent with commission policies. There's no ag land conversion. It conforms to the assessor's parcels. There's no functional overlap. There's adequate water supply. Uh, the county has provided an indemnification agreement. SQL is, is handled by a notice of exemption. Affected uh, and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies, and any notices and publications required by law. Unlike the first one, there will be two votes. The first is on the annexation. It is my recommendation that the commission consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant approve annexation uh, to CSA 34, a contingent on the res results of the protest hearing. Is there any public comment to this issue? If not, commissioners, any comment or questions? Um, do I have a motion for 1758 annexation? So moved. First. I'll second. Okay. Uh, first by Commissioner Morris, second by Commissioner Couch. Please cast your votes. Motion approved. All ayes. And the second recommendation is on the sphere of influence amendment. And it's my recommendation to consider the environmental impact report. Or I'm sorry, that is the not environmental impact report. It's a notice of exemption adopted by the applicant covering both the annexation and sphere amendment. Approve the sphere amendment conditional on approval of annexation, which you just did. Uh, so that's my recommendation. I move approval. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Couch, second by Commissioner Fowler. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we're on to number six, public project review. There is none. No. Uh, number eight, commission items. There is none. Uh, we're on to number nine, general business, approval of the claims list number 19-08. Move approval. We have a, um, a motion by Commissioner Couch, second by Commissioner Fowler. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. We're on to number B, LAFCO Oath of Office, Mr. Knox. Yeah, for those who, of you who are not in, at the last commission meeting, it has come to my attention that LAFCO commissioners are required to take an oath of office. Please read the oath and provide LAFCO with a sign and dated copy. This is a, just a signature requirement for this item. And please provide them to Aaron before you leave today. No further. Uh, no. 
Okay. Uh, number C, legislative, uh, le legislative year end review. Mr. Knox. Yes. In your agenda is a list of bills that Calafco sponsored and bills that were signed by the governor earlier this month. These are bills that will, that will have some sort of effect on our LAFCO operations. Uh, I'm not gonna go over each bill with you. I'm guessing you can read them. Uh, there's, there's one word in one bill that I wanna bring to your attention, just to let you know how this process works a little bit. This one word could have cost uh, LAFCO a significant amount of time and resources in perpetuity. In, AB, in uh, legislation AB 1822 contains the word conducted in reference to MSRs but that's not how the bill originally read. It originally read this bill would also define the term service review as in municipal service review. Uh, that's interesting, it fell off the end of my page. Let's see if I can get that to work. This bill would also define the, the term service review for purposes of the act to mean the analysis written by the commission, documenting and analyzing the services in a particular geographic region or, or, jur or jurisdictional area pursuant to the process described above. Written could be interpreted to mean that, it, that LAFCO is responsible for writing individual MSRs on each city, special district, and CSA. While MSRs are the LAFCO's documents, they are written by the city or special district to our specifications. We don't write them in-house. By having the word written, it could have been interpreted that we had to do that in-house. In so I, I argued for changing that word and we came up with conducted. And we do conduct the process, <coughs> but that also allows some flexibility to say others can write it and we, we adopt it. So that, just changing one word can, can actually change quite a bit in a piece of legislation uh, that you gotta, you gotta be pay, pay attention to individual words. Uh, and so that's a win on our part. So I'm really proud that we were able to do that. Thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> with that in mind, I've been asked by Cal AFCO to serve as vice chair of the legislative committee for this next year. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, not just because of that one word. Um, I have considered additional time constraints and believe I can serve as vice chair without losing the performance of my duties as executive officer. Unless the commission has objections, I'm going to let Cal AFCO know that I can serve. Okay. Um, and this is, the uh, legislative list is also an informational item. Uh, I do have some words and I believe we have letters on your desk from uh, Ventura LAFCO on the due structure for Cal LAFCO, which we'll handle in Sacramento next week. Um, in your wisdom, um, last month you made me your delegate um, at the convention to handle this issue. It has been quite interesting to see the comments going back from executive officers. Uh, both for and against, so I think it's going to be kind of an interesting race to see how uh, that is determined uh, at, at the conference. And that's my report on the policy committee. Okay, we're on to uh, D. Policy committee? Yeah, I, that's my report on legislative okay. activity. Now my report on the policy committee. Uh, the commission's uh, sent the definition of substantially surrounded back to the policy committee for additional work. Recently, an effort was unsuccessful to bring the policy committee together before this meeting. I will re try again when we return from the Cal AFCO conference. So we'll try to get that, that, those four commissioners together to, to go over that that definition again and see if we can come to some resolution. Okay. Uh, number E, or letter E, uh, executive office or miscellaneous items. Yep. Uh, we continue working on the audit for 2018, 2019. We're very close to having that finished. I'm hoping to bring that to you at our December, I think it's fourth meeting, if I remember right. Um, so that's going along well. So far there hasn't been any red flags that have come up. 
uh, we are starting to make some changes to our website. Uh, for those of you who can't get enough of LAFCO, for the first time we have the ability to link a video uh, to our commission meetings onto our website. Um, as you know, uh, the county hosts our website and we aren't, we aren't given a whole lot of room, but with the help of the folks at KGov, the guys in the back, they download it to YouTube and then send us the link from, from YouTube so we can actually put that on the website. Uh, it's, it also appears to be a pretty good um, cure for insomnia, <laughs> except if you're mere, well, except for me, because watching myself and listening to myself is really kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not, not something I really enjoy. Um, I also mentioned at the last meeting that we've secured a new domain name, and with that, we have brand new email accounts. Uh, so I am EO at kernlafco.org. Bud is analyst at kernlafco.org, Aaron is clerk at kernlafco.org, and Aaron, our receptionist, and Lily. Yes, Lily uh, is our receptionist, but mostly she's handling our, our data and map uh, scanning effort. And so hers is receptionist at kernlafco.org. Our old mail, email still work, but the sooner that people get custom and new emails, the better. Uh, also, next week is the CalAFCO conference. Currently, four commissioners and three, three staff will be attending. It looks to be a strong group of speak speakers and panels for this year. Um, starting tomorrow, we are closing down the office for several days. Um, we have a remodel. As you remember, we had a, um, we signed a five-year agreement to continue to stay at our same place. And with that, they gave us $20,000 towards a remodel. And that starts, we're pretty much packed up now and we'll be out of there tomorrow morning. Uh, and so they've got roughly nine to 10 days to complete the work. Uh, we will be moving back in uh, Monday, J uh, November 4th, not January, no, <laughs> November 4th. Uh, as it works out, we would only be out of the office two days longer than we would be normally for the convention. So this Friday and coming Monday, uh, uh, we won't be in the office like we normally would be. We all have uh, access to our emails and the phones will be forwarded to my cell phone. So if there's any urgent business, either call me direct or, or call the number and it'll be sent to me. Um, I was also able to finally work out a deal with property management to use one of the empty office spaces um, I made an offer of paying them additional $500 to do, to do that. They informed me today that they're going to waive that $500 fee. Oh. So that's going to be helpful. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, starting tomorrow morning, we're just moving our stuff down, down the hallway. I'm off, with, with the remodel, I'm looking for a conference table and chairs, ideally be 10 to 12 feet long to fit our space. Uh, if you know, one, know of anyone who has a conference table that's in decent shape, uh, let me know. Uh, we could use one in our office. And with that, our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, January, oops, that's wrong. Uh, Wednesday, uh, December, December 5th. 5th, 4th, 5th. <laughs> First Wednesday in December. If you, if you remember right, uh, we do not have a meeting in, in uh, November. The fourth Wednesday comes before the fourth Thursday, which is Thanksgiving. Uh, so no one would probably show up. Uh, so we move, it, we move it a week later and then don't have another meeting until the end of January. Uh, and with that, that's into my, my report. Okay. We're on to closed December session. 4th. There is none. Yeah. We're adjourned.